Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight. This is Rome Business Radio. We are broadcasting from the Hardy Realty Studios, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. I'm Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. I'm Amber West with the Rome Floyd Chamber, and we are joined today by LaDonna Collins with the Rome Floyd County Commission on Children and Youth, Dr. Don Williams, interim Rome City School Superintendent, and then Missy Kendrick with the Rome Floyd Development Authority. Hello, ladies. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. Good well. Thank you so much for being here. We do appreciate it. Uh, welcome to our cocktail party without the cocktails. Uh, so uh, speaking of cocktail parties without the cocktails, let's kind of get the conversation going. We're all getting to know each other here a little bit. Um, LaDonna, we're going to go around the room here and give everybody a minute or two to tell us about their organization, kind of the big picture thing. And uh, we'll start with you, if you don't mind. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do. So the Rome Floyd County Commission on Children and Youth is a nonprofit that's been in Rome since 1989. And we're all about collaboration, making sure that everybody in the community, particularly those that work with children, families, and youth have what they need. So I like to say that uh, we are a community resource, but we, we really focus a lot on collaboration. And two of our main focuses are... Um, Strengthening the family bond by trying to decrease child abuse and neglect, as well as improve school success. And we focus on community childhood literacy. So um, we're just really excited to be here. And in January, we celebrated our third, our thirty third birthday. So we're wow. really excited to uh, happy birthday be here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, it's also nice to meet you face to face. You have done the podcast before, but it was back during the Zoom days. Yes, in <laughs> August, right after the Chamber um, membership event. So glad to see you in person. <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully the world is getting back to normal. Well, well, I, I, the, talk about the COVID affecting. I guess the school systems got affected, didn't it? <laughs> most definitely. But we were um, grateful that we were able to stay in school for the most part of it. We only had to shut down for a little bit. Um, but yeah, we've pulled through and we're rocking and rolling and getting ready for another school year, um, fast around the corner. All right. So I don't have any kids. So what's going on right now? So right now we are gearing up for another year. Um, just shut down one year and ready for a new one. Um, we start July 30th. Um, so another year of starting in July, but we like to start on Friday. So, okay. you know, it's, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, but, um, we are working, uh, really hard since the community passed the East Blast. So we are getting ready to, um, build a new Rome Middle School. So that's what is a very awesome for us right now. So we are in the planning stages for that. So, okay. Planning stages to fruition. How long do we, do we know? Uh, two years, two and a half years. Okay. Hopefully, yes. So hopefully um, we're going to get that baby up <laughs> really fast <laughs> because we need to because this community is growing so fast that um, we're anticipating um, even more growth than what we have and we're busting at the seams. So um, we're uh, in, in conjunction with that, we're going to be adding on to East Central and West End um, onto both of those buildings um, because they're, they, they need the room. Um, so we're going to be doing that in conjunction with building the new middle school. Just can you put numbers on it? How many how many students do we have in the system, and how many how many actual school buildings are there? I guess I could. We're over sixty five hundred right now, um, and we're growing a couple hundred a year um, right now. But we have so many anticipated uh, developments going up in the next couple of years that you know the anticipated growth is um, you know phenomenal, really. Um, but we have six elementary schools, one middle, one high school. Um, currently our sixth graders are in the elementary schools. And so the one change that we're going to make is the middle school will house sixth through eighth instead of just seventh and eighth. So that in itself will be a facility growth for each of our elementary schools, because that will take the sixth graders out and give all of them some breathing room. Well, I was a West End warrior back in the day. Back in the day. (laughs) Uh, So um, the development authority. What yes. are we developing? <laughs> yes, um, we are. Our overall responsibility is to recruit business and industry to the community. So we're bringing as many jobs as we can. So you're right. Yes. I mean, we have to have the workers to fill those jobs, and that's probably the impetus behind all of the housing development that that we've seen coming along as we speak. Um, so you can either blame us. Right, or, yeah. but, I mean, it's a good problem we to will, have. Yeah. We will, I don't believe that Roman Floyd County will look the same in 10 years. Mm-hmm. If all of the, the housing developments and that kind of thing 
if they do come to fruition, there will be a, a great population change here Definitely. in Northern Floyd County. Well, I guess that's the, the, the school folks, you have to really be looking ahead. We are. To, way ahead. Yeah, way yes. ahead to yep. plan that. Now, the development, tell me about the history of the Development Authority. This is, this is in recent years. Well, um, my development authority is the Rome Floyd County Development Authority, but we actually have three different authorities here in the county. There's the Development Authority of Floyd County and also a joint development authority, which is the Gordon Floyd County Development Authority. And all three of those authorities own property and uh, land in Floyd County. So um, we manage all three of those authorities and uh, we market the property and our authority is a statutory, I mean, is a constitutional authority, meaning it was formed by the Georgia State Constitution, and the other authorities are statutory authorities, meaning that they were um, started by the local government. Okay, so Amber, I guess this is a question for both of you. So how did the, how did the Chamber and the Development Authority work together, or where, where are what do you do differently or separately? How do y'all, how do you? Uh, we are absolute partners yeah. in economic Con- development. I was, I was constantly yeah. working together yes. w- without stepping on each other's toes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't really have territory. Yeah. I mean, it's more of that we're on the same team working to bring in and recruit business and industry. So we service both new industry as well as existing industry. And one big important program through the chamber, and I don't mean to speak no, for you, you are Amber, good. but you is go for um, <laughs> the Greater Rome Existing Industry Association, which is GRIA. And the chair of GRIA sits on my board. So, and the chair, the chair of the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors sits on my board. So we have, it's a symbiotic relationship. We are partners and work together on all of it. So um, when the, when the growth happens, give me a success story. Give me, give me, give me uh, like, like one business that uh, just has, has set up shop here that wasn't here 10 years ago. Uh, yeah. Well, um, we'll have to look at expansions as well as there new we industries. There we go. And there are any number. Um, we, Ball Corporation did an expansion in their existing facility where they added another canning line. They do the metal cans. Yep. But also, they decided to manufacture the new Ball Aluminum Cup here in Rome. So they built a new facility next to the one that they had and are now manufacturing the aluminum cups here. There's also Cary, Cary Food Products, which bought a former Southeastern Mills facility and did a $125 million renovation on it. And is now they're now doing the um, crumbs and toppings, that kind of thing here in Roman Floyd County. Um, I could name more. Yep. F&P, um, <laughs> VT Industries. I mean, just uh, several, several more. As a matter of fact, uh, Rome was named last year they were named number eight in the nation for economic development in metros our size so we have had a really? lot of economic development success development success here in roman floyd county over the okay. last few years so when you say we won't look the same in 10 years you, it's... I'm, I'm a change agent <laughs> hey, i love that i love that I, I like that description a change <laughs> agent so how many people work for the authority for your authority we have four full-time staff members okay and uh you're located at Turner McCall and Broad. Actually, downstairs from where we're sitting today. <laughs> right. Uh, we have acquired several pieces of property over the last year, I would say, um, to add to our inventory. And so uh, we had to add some staff to take care of maintenance on some of the properties that we have. So we have four. Okay. Um, so you're you're constitutionally set up. You're, LaDonna, you're a nonprofit, right? We are a nonprofit. Are you tied to the government? Uh, we we are not. Okay. We're, we're, we're just, we. you know, well, there was a House bill, House Bill 789 um, from Governor Zell Miller back in 1987. And the governor at that point in time wanted communities to use local data to make local decisions because at that time all the data was at the state level and the state was like, Ooh, well the state is high in teenage pregnancy. So everybody worked on teenage pregnancy, even if it didn't impact their County. So in 1987 house bill 789 was pushed through. And at that point in time, they were like, we have all this local data but how in the world can we get it to our local county? So Floyd County uh, was really, really big on that. Um, Dr. Daryl Dean and Linda Dean, they were really big in saying, hey, let's make sure that we are on, go ahead and be on the cuffs of that 
And so they started at that point in time, I think it was um, we needed more mobile health units. So they got a grant somehow back in the early, late 80s, 1989, and um, got a mobile health unit. And it went around and then just expanded. And at one point in time, the Commission on Children and Youth had 16 programs and 20 plus employees. Um, Now we're down to. What? I was the only employee for the past uh, three years, but so excited. We hired a part-time person um, just a month ago, and she is our programs and coordinator, initiatives coordinator. I'm really, really excited about her uh, being with us because she takes a load off of me as the executive director because my hands were everywhere, um, and I really wanted to be um, – Sending the thank you cards and letting our funders know how grateful we are and doing what quote unquote executive directors do and just making sure that I'm present, but giving room for other people to grow. So Kim was going to be here with us today, but um, she got sick. So, um, you know, we... um, I'm missing her today already because once you've been by yourself for three years and you have somebody to talk to um, <laughs> and not yourself, but it is, it's great. I've been in a collaborative office at Restoration Room for the past three years, so I um, had some people to talk to there, but I did a lot of talking to myself. So <laughs> Just don't answer yourself. Hey, it'll be okay. I answered myself a lot because nobody else was in the room with me, but we, we, we enjoy what we do and um, just doing a lot of different things in the community. Actually, yes. Yesterday, uh, we have um, a program called Books, Barbers, and Beauticians. And that was that's one of our literacy components in the community where we set up book nooks in local barbershops. Because um, when I first got here, one of our initiatives was um, increasing the graduation rate. And I come from the world of a former GED teacher um, at Georgia Northwestern. And I was like, okay, there is nothing that we can do because we're not in the schools But in the community, we can do something because when I was a GED teacher, some of my students would come in reading on second and third grade levels and they were 16 years old. So I was like, if we catch these babies early on and they they reach that third year proficiency level of reading, then we're going to make sure that they can reach graduation. So let's catch them earlier. And so we set up book nooks in barbershops and beauty salons and we're so excited we have one barbershop and it's at um, Hawthorne Suites it's called Signature Styles um, the stylist her name is Beady. <laughs> she's been cutting hair for probably 30 years and the first week we started February 2020 and um, we've had over 600 books read and these babies are taking these books home and they're able to start their home reading library on their own and reading is so vitally and important Our beauty salon did not work because we realized little girls don't get their hair done that much, but they get braids. Mm -hmm. So yesterday we set up a a book nook at a, a braiding salon in South Rome. And we're just really excited about it. And the more books read they read, the more incentives they get. For So for every five books they read, they get a gift card. Um, the tenth book they read, they get a higher gift card. By the fifth book, they will get a free service. Wow. Yeah. You got it going on. So we love it. How are you funded? So we are funded through an organization called Georgia Family Connection Partnership. So there is actually one of me in every county in the state of Georgia. Okay. And they get money from the Department of Human Resources, but that doesn't make me a state employee because we are our own non-fiscal agent. So we also, we get money from... Floyd County government, they give us a little bit of money, but we also have really big fundraisers. So as I was stating earlier, we're about to embark on our 28th annual Swing for Kids Golf Classic. It's at Stonebridge. Um, we're really excited about that. Um, we have an exciting event since we're all ladies and one man. One man. Um, <laughs> we have a uh, uh, for the ladies only golf clinic. And that sells out very fast. So um, it's five bays. So we're calling it Grab You a Bay, B-A-E, not B-A-Y. Uh, <laughs> Grab You a Bay partner, um, ladies. And we're just going to have a good time. But we usually have about anywhere between 20, 25 teams. Um, Chick-fil-A is our um Lunch sponsor, we usually get Jim Aaron from the East Rome and our Murchie McDonald's to do our breakfast. But we have so many organizations that come out. We have little kids that come and do the national anthem. So we really bring in the kids and all the proceeds from that go right back into us. And we give out many grants to other youth serving nonprofits in Rome. 
Wow. Yeah. Um, and when's that golf tournament? September the 23rd. So it's on a Friday, September 23rd on a Friday. We're really looking forward to it. Okay. Um, Dawn, is much, she was stressing how getting, getting kids to read. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to jump in right there and <laughs> say she's got it going on. And, and really, any anyone who can help support what they're doing, the literacy by third grade, which is what she said, mm-hmm. is the important marker in success um, by third grade, for sure. So that's where our emphasis is, is on literacy by third grade. Um, And the incentive programs, just like what she's doing, we implemented um, an incentive program, which the schools all have been doing, but we started one district-wide Probably, I think we're we've done it two or three years now. Um, Julie Reed yeah. uh, heads that incentive program up, and it's putting books in the hands of children. Um, the more we can get them to read and enjoy reading, it's not that have to read, you know, because of a a project or grade yeah. or homework or anything like that. It's the love of reading that we want to instill in students. And can I, can I, can I bring, mention something, you know, with equity, equity, um, diversity and inclusion, we had a light bulb had to go off for us. We realized that we have to put books in the hands of kids that yes. look like them and that their names. So, we had to actually have a whole different process and we had to buy new books. But fortunately, Dollar General, we got a grant from them, um, Dollar General. So we were able to buy new books to put in every new location because books have to apply to you. So you're not going to read anything if it's not of interest to you. Right. But you're also not going to read anything, let's be honest, if it's about a Caucasian person and you're African-American or you're a Latino so we had to actually get new books that related to the cultures that we are working with. And that's something that we missed. But, you know, with the new equity, diversity and inclusion that brought light to what we needed to do. And it's making a change because they want to take books home. It's just something we don't think about. Well, and it's, I would imagine it's important to start reading before school, if, you know, parental involvement. And, uh, you yes. know, it's not just ABCs. It's whatever you can do to get a head start. Right. Yes. Anything you can do. And, and we actually extended our incentive program into the summer this year because that was the thing. It's like, we'll why less. are we why are we stopping at the summer because they're going home and what are they, what are they doing? They're not doing anything. So we extended it this year. I don't, we'll see how many actually are doing it, but I'm ex- I'm excited to see because we put more money into those incentives. Mm-hmm. So when they get back, hopefully, you know they'll they'll have those um, those winnings of where they've they've taken the time over the summer to read. Is the jury still out, or is it something you can already tell? Has there been any kind of gap in learning because of? COVID and even social development at certain ages because of, you know, not being in school with other people for long periods of time? Most definitely. Um, there's definitely a gap. And, and you know, they say it's going to be years um, before they before we catch up. Um, and it's it's interesting to me because, you know, all across the country, schools being students being out of school ranged like our students really weren't out that long. We were very fortunate that we got back in. Um, where in some places they were out for a year or more. Um, so I can't even imagine in those places how big the gap is because we we can see it. We have, there is a slide, you can see it in the test scores, um, both the formative, the map assessment that we do during the year and then in the milestones um, at the end of the year. But but there, we're we're making it back. Like we can we can see we've got we've got some gains back. But um, just depends on the student too and the access and and what was going on. But like you say, it's not just in the academics. It's in the social. It's in the mental health. Yeah. Um, the mental health is the huge topic right now. Um, just you know, anxiety, depression, just different different things with the way not just the students, but the adults in the world yeah. are dealing with that change that we all went through. Well, plus kids have to deal with social media and all that yes. stuff now that, uh, you know, didn't have to deal with back. I don't want to say how long ago, but <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yes. What, what is your background? My background? Yeah. Um, I taught math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a math teacher at heart. Yes. Uh, like from where, where'd you go to school? Um, I originally, um, as far as education wise was in Tennessee before I came here. Um, I came and had my first admin job at uh, admin job at Rome middle school as an assistant principal 20 years ago. So, um, I've been in Rome for 20 years. Oh, 
Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Miss, Missy, what is your background? How did you get in the development business? Oh, well, I don't think anyone intentionally <laughs> right. grows up and says, I want to be an economic developer when I grow up. You, you, you so said a cha- all, change agent. We all get to the path in our own way. But um, I am, I call myself a serial entrepreneur in that I have owned and operated several businesses in my lifetime. And um, being involved in that business world Um, In another community that I worked in, I saw the need to start a business association, which was like a mini chamber. And so from that, I was asked to go to work at a chamber of commerce and then led a chamber and chamber and development authority together and then went to a development authority that was a standalone authority and have worked in that in this field for um, 28 years now. Uh, How are you guys funded? Uh, We are funded by a couple of ways, kind of like LaDonna, in that we get some funding from the City of Rome and Floyd County, but the majority of our funding comes from pilot fees. So when we offer incentives to an industry, they pay, we put in place a pilot program, and pilot stands for payment in lieu of taxes. So they do pay taxes, but they also pay an administration fee to the development authority for, um, for, the, the incentive itself so it's kind of, it's just an administrative fee so we get a we get that and with the that's the bulk of our funding is but from those incentives it, it is interesting to me one of the sometimes we discuss this on the podcast some people um, high school college they know what they want to do and and they do it for the next 40 or 50 years and they get their gold watch and they retire or whatever but some people bounce around until it finds them or they find it so you mentioned your entrepreneurial streak which is interesting to me like what what might you have dabbled in prior to landing in development world well i had a sears catalog store that i bought when i was 21 years old and um then the you will understand this. The Sears catalog stores went, I mean, the Sears catalog went out of business. Yep. Yes. So um, There's then, a thing called Amazon now. Right. That is correct. And so then I, w- I decided to stay and keep it as an appliance business. So okay. I had an appliance and uh, appliance repair business and sold that. And then I bought a restaurant and owned and operated a restaurant on the side. I was working at the chamber at the time. And I would go in before work and get the staff started, get it, you know, up and going for the day. And then after my chamber job, I'd go in and um, close it down for the day and work there on the weekends. And then I got uh, pregnant and couldn't, <laughs> could, couldn't keep up that pace. Oh, gosh, that's, so that's inspiring. I inspiring. sold that. And then I was in the home medical equipment business. And right now I have some rental homes. Oh, well, funny. You kept pointing to Amber about your chamber job. Are you telling her to go in the restaurant business? Absolutely not. <laughs> I love, I mean, if I had plenty of money, I would stay in the restaurant business, but you're not going to make a lot of money in the restaurant business. It just will wear you out. You have to work very, very hard. I have to give props to anybody that wow. owns a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Um, and especially through COVID, because they were, re- I mean, it's, some businesses Absolutely. have been hit, hit worse than others, and, and they were hit really hard. Well, um, Amber, I guess that's Chamber Wheelhouse when you hear a serial entrepreneur. I mean, that's that's what you want. Right? Well, you we want, love you want, entrepreneurs. You, <laughs> that is just our bread and butter. So we love when we have someone come in saying, we have this great idea, and we're like, that is perfect. We need that here. <laughs> yeah. So we love to hear people who have that spirit in them. Um, well, that's what I did. I, I said, I've got to get this idea for a podcast. Oh, he, did. <laughs> he knocked on the door one day and yeah. said, I right, got well, an idea. Uh, metaphorically. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course. Of course. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how this came to fruition. So That's cool. Uh, and met with the paper and, and kind of finagle to deal together so uh but we do we'd love to do more podcasts for more local businesses so that's one of the reasons we keep doing it create the networking and and um you know because anybody that wants to do a podcast on our service you know everything's taken care of the studio the microphones the the editing the uh, the uploading and you know the marketing and all of that in partnership with the paper you just show up and you can talk about your business or bring guests on Wow. That that rep- you know that you do and we do weeklies or monthlies, but there I've I've sung my I've pitched my pro- my, my uh, 
product there for a minute. Yeah, our wheels turn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Ladonna, what is your background? You said you, you you said you did some GED teaching. Yeah, but, but so let me see. My did, first job out of college, I was the public health educator at the health department here in Rome at the Teen Center. Okay, and where'd you where'd you go to college? I went to Georgia Southern University, okay. and then I transferred to Columbus State University. I actually ran track at Georgia Southern University. I was oh, I got received a full track scholarship, <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I did that, and then I um, so I worked there two years full time. But I was in the schools all the time. I was at the youth detention center all the times, so and I was like, you know what? I want to be a teacher. But here's the catch: I don't want to work with regular ed students. I only want to work with those behavior disorder students. And at the time, I did not know that there was a name for them. So I became a severe emotional behavior disorder teacher. And at that time, I was working on my master's in secondary education. So I got that and um, I became a severe emotional behavior disorder teacher. But at the same time, I was contract at the health department as the um, public health educator. So I was a teacher for four years and um Back around 2008, the financial crunch came in. I was the last one hired, um, the last first one out. And I was okay with that because I was just at the space where for me, um, my students were very important. And for me, I wanted to find out what went on with them. I can be honest. I was more concerned about their behavior, um, their family life than academics. And that doesn't work in the education system. So, um, not if you, you want to work for Don. Not if you want to work for Don or anybody, right? So I, um, Left that field, actually went right back to public health, and they hired me on full-time again. I did that for a few months. Then I worked for the Housing Authority, and I was over there after school care program for probably about three months. Then left public health, well, left the health department, went to the district health office, and I was their public health emergency preparedness training coordinator for five years. And uh, so the COVID um, plan that that was used at the fairground. That was my plan. That was used, wow. um, yeah, because we practiced that, and so I did that. Oh, we had a plan. Yeah, yeah. we did have a plan. <laughs> that we have a plan. Yeah. Yes, that's, awesome. um, that's why emergency preparedness, public health. Um, so I did that for five years. I missed working with teenagers. So in the process, I started a business in 2013. Um, that's still going. But then after five years of working in public health, I missed working with teenagers. So I was a GED teacher for 16 to 24 year olds. And I did that for five years and was on the board for the Rumflet County Commission on Children and Youth. And they sent me on a conference to Jekyll Island. And uh, that was my first interview. They tricked me. <laughs> and um, I came back and was like, I could not forget about the job. And at that point in time, Kara Willis had announced her uh, retirement. And um, next thing I knew, I had an email about applying. <laughs> and I decided to apply. And I've been there for three years. So the, well, the connection here all the way through seems to be kids keep calling you back. Yes. They <laughs> um, do that. Yeah. They do. Was, well, Dawn, was, you, was yours uh, when you were – did you always want to be a teacher? And was it yes. so? Was it about you love math, or you wanted to be around kids, or it was both? I think. Um, and then after, before getting into it, and then once into it, it's about the kids. It's, it really was about the kids, and then just about the system and about just making things better is what I ended up getting into administration wow. for. Well, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. How did that, how did that yeah. open its just, doors to you? Just being a teacher in day to day and just thinking, you know, how can, how can things, um, somebody said something about a change agent and <laughs> like, that's how I feel. It's like always, I'm always seeking to make things better and how can I do that? And so my brain's always, always going. And we all have headaches in our job. I would imagine yours has a lot. <laughs> just a few. <laughs> just, a, just a few. Uh, parents? No. <laughs> well, you know. Um, you know, parents are concerned. That, yeah. that, you know, our babies are our number one priority. I can be that parent sometimes, too. And so, parents have their you know, own issues as yeah, well. For so sure. it's not just, yeah. you know. So the key, the key with parents is just listening. Um, I've always I've always said that. I want to be heard. You want to be heard. So everybody wants to be heard. Um, everybody has a legitimate concern, you know, and so you just have to listen. 
So what's what's the next few years? What what are the what's our school system look like? Your the the new middle school is the new top, middle school top priority is is top priority. Um, safety and security is top priority. Obviously, that's been in in the headlines um, recently. Of course, um, and that's have, always have, have been. We, I was going to say, but have we, are we re- revisiting that? In- um, for us at, in Rum City, uh, revisiting just to the extent of making sure everybody knows what we need to know. Right. Um, I, I feel like we're in a good place. Um, you know, we we have good security measures. Um, we've got good plans. So every year we revamp those, we go back through them, we retrain. So I just actually met with our uh, safety and security director before coming here today. And so it's, it's about just making sure that, Everybody knows what we need to know and that we practice our drills and that we just we're There's on top of things. Plans and protocols and procedures yes. and training and yes. and re- re- reanalyzing every year. Exactly. Isn't, it, isn't it sad that we have to do that? It is sad. Yeah. It is sad. But, you know, to me, safety is number one. Yep. I mean, a parent, want to, want, you want to know you send your child to school and they're coming back home. Yep. And, you know, nothing in this life is 100% guaranteed, but by, <laughs> we're going to try. That's yeah. going to be number one. We're going to do our best at that. Okay, well, let's kind of go just go around the room here one more time, and and uh, if you got any more final thoughts, something you want to make sure you mention about an upcoming event or your organization, but specifically contact information. How can people connect with you? Social media, your website, phone numbers, emails, whatever you want to pass out. Um, I guess Missy, we can start with you at the Development Authority. Okay, uh, Rome Floyd County Development Authority. We have a website which is www.developromefloyd.com. And all of our contact information is there, as as well as news and events. And um, but personally, I'm Missy Kendrick at developromefloyd dot com, and our telephone number is seven zero six four one three four two one three. I did want to mention to you earlier, so I'm, I apologize, ladies. Well, well, I got one more question for Missy. Uh, one of the success stories of the Business Radio X, this is a franchised operation. There are studios all over the country. And I have a friend who operates the studio in Gwinnett County, Georgia. And because we're on the Internet, you know, you can be listened to anywhere. There was a businessman in Columbia, South America, who was Googling business opportunities in the United States. He needed to move a factory. And he started listening to the Gwinnett Business Radio platform and then started doing his research on Gwinnett County and found out about their airport and the access to highways. And Suddenly, there was a 250-employee warehouse uh, in Gwinnett County. So what is your pitch for Rome Floyd County? If somebody's listening and they're listening anywhere in the world, tell them about our lovely community and what a great place it is to do business. <laughs> well, um, for, for companies like that, a lot of that is about statistics. So we have a lot of the demographics that they're looking for. They're l- looking to make sure that they can have a positive bottom line in order to do business here, and you can. We are a business-friendly community. We have a, um, a working relationship between the city and the county that makes it easy to, do, to start a business here and to operate a business here. We have a, an educated, quality workforce, which is probably, after making sure the money works, that they have a um, qualified workforce in place. And so with the efforts of the Chamber of Commerce and the Development Authority working together, we are trying to tackle workforce. For us, it's not a quality problem. It's a quantity problem. So we are working hard on making sure that we have the the number of people to fill the jobs that they need, and we do. We have um, the access to four-lane interstates. We have access to... Um, the infrastructure, water and sewer, in capacities that is just that's unheard of. We are very for, fortunate to have the capacity of water and sewer that um, that we do that a lot of other communities do not have. Okay. And we have available land, and it is developed and ready for somebody to come and open up tomorrow. Let's move to Rome if you yeah. don't already right. live here. It's a great place right. to live. Plus, yeah. the quality of life. Yeah. Oh, the, God. The, 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 the the beauty of the town and. The, yes. the, pe- the warmth yeah. of the people and, mm-hmm. um, you know, so, um, and the great education system. Yes, definitely. <laughs> we, have, around. we have five colleges and universities here. We have three hospital systems, two hospitals and the largest physician owned clinic here. Um, two school systems with two college and career academies. So, I mean, it's the quality of life, tourism. We have water sports. We have the Rome Braves. We have the, the tennis center, the largest hardcourt tennis center in the country. 
So Great I mean, trail system, <laughs> and you can just go on and yep. on and on. It's we don't have a problem with people wanting to live here, right? We just have a problem with where they're going to live. So that's what we're working on now. Uh, okay, great. Um, LaDonna, final thoughts from you and contact information? Um, you can find us on social media, Facebook. We're really active on Facebook. We like to work with our families and let the families know um, that we're here to help and support them. So you can find us at Rome Floyd County Commission on Children and Youth on Facebook. You can always call me at 706-844-4952. Shoot me a text. Give me a call as well as our website, www.r org and um, hey come and look for us we were always willing to talk to you and partner with you and make sure that if you have something that families need we're going to get it in the right hands okay thank you LaDonna you're welcome and Dawn final thoughts uh, school year's coming and- school year's coming and we're getting ready and we're going to be ready it's going to be an awesome year uh, but one other thing I did want to put a plug in for our uh, virtual learning academy um, for students and parents who, you know, either are still not wanting to get back into into uh, person-to-person um, learning or just are, do better at home um, because we do offer that for K-12 through students. And so, um, and we even accept tuition students for that. So uh, that's definitely an opportunity that's growing. We decided to keep, we started it up with COVID obviously when we had to, but we definitely have that um, continuing. So um, that's a definite opportunity for students. Amber, final thoughts from the chamber? We're just so thankful for everybody that's here today, and we love learning a little bit more about each of them. And we have tons of great events going on at the chamber. So if you have any interest in any kind of event, um, if you want to just come and learn about what we do, please stop by our office. Um, You can find all our information at RomeGA.com or on any social media platform. We're just Rome Floyd Chamber. We'd love to talk to you. Great. Thank you so much. Ladies, it's been a pleasure. I do appreciate it. You've been listening to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight here on Rome Business Radio. We broadcast from the Hardy Realty Studios, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. Thanks again.